Hi everyone, my name is Corey Dow and I'm a technical marketing engineer for Aruba Campus Switching. Today we're gonna to provide an update on the forwarding info feature. It's new to AOS CX 10.11 for the 8325 and 10,000 series switches. For the agenda, we'll provide an overview, talk about the use cases, details and caveats, and then mention best practices. Okay, so what is the forwarding info feature? Forwarding info is a feature used to determine the forwarding information of a packet given packet header details and ingress port information. It combines really two features into one, L2 path tracing and L3 ECMP load balance. In case traffic is egressing out a lag or ECMP, this feature provides the actual physical interface. In the case of L2 or L3 lag interfaces, the output is based on the load balance configuration in the system i.e. L2 source and destination, L3 source and destination, and or L4 source and destination. Why is the feature important? It closes a competitive gap, and it also assists in support in, it assists support in troubleshooting packet forwarding when, there's, when there are multiple paths to the destination. Which AOS CX platforms are supported? As we mentioned, the 8325 and the 10,000 series platforms are supported, as well as both uh, IPv4 and IPv6 sources and destinations. It, this slide just simply shows the equivalent commands whether they're switched vendors. Okay, so for the command syntax, there are basically three new arguments to the show forwarding info CLI command. Uh, and they provide their certain mandatory parameters as well as optional parameters. The, the required parameters, as you can see, are the interface name, the VLAN ID, the MAC address, and the IP uh, v4 or IPv6 destination uh, addresses. The commands are used to get forwarding information based on current system configurations and hardware states for forwarding lookups. The user provides the L2, L3, and L4 packet information along with the ingress interface and VLAN ID. And the destination MAC address is required for L2 forwarding lookups. The destination IP or destination IPv6 is required for route resolution lookups for L3 forwarding and or ECMP. And so these are the default lag caches that you see there configured in the system for the 8325, both the L3 source of destination for, for both platforms. Okay, so we're gonna look at use cases and, and basically examples for how this is configured in the system or how it's, how it's actually used. So in this topology here, we have two 8325 VSX pairs at the bottom with a core connections to core one and core two. And we have a destination reached at the top through through uh, destination IP 192.168.1.10. And as you can see by looking at the routing table, there, there are two next tops for that destination, the two paths towards the destination on the 8325.01. So next stop 172.16.11 through port 111. And then next stop 172.16.3.1 through port 112. So how will I know which port is forwarding to destination 192.168.1.10 without first taking a packet capture? You'd use the show forwarding info IP command. As you can see here, we specify the source IP address, the destination IP address, and then the system finds that uh, egress interface 112 is the egress interface for forwarding to that destination. Okay, and in this next example, we have an L3 lag that connects uh, two 10,000 series switches through lag one uh, using route only ports uh, off of lag one. And so there's a destination network 192.168.3.0 where the destination is reached through from the 10,001 core switch. And uh, so that's two physical paths towards that destination. Lag one has ports 111 and 112 there, as you can see. So if you wanna know which L3 lag port is forwarding to the destination without first taking a packet capture, how would you find out? We issue the show forwarding info IP command again, using the source IP and the destination IP address. And we can see that the egress interface is using lag one and port 112 to reach destination 192.168.3.2. And this uh, next 
CLI command is just showing you an example of the basically the same command. We're just specifying additional arguments to query the hash table, uh, such as the transport protocol six, the source L4 port 1234, and the destination L4 port 5678. We reached the same conclusion that lag one and port 112 are used to forward traffic out to that destination. Okay, in this next example, we have uh, two core switches. Again, we're just using two 10,000 series switches configured with an L2 lag connecting the two switches, passing just basically VLAN 1 through an SVI. And we've configured the L4 source and destination hash in the lag configuration for lag 1. And we can see that 192.168.1.11 is in the MAC table, reached through lag 1. And again, in the same case, there's two physical ports to that destination. And we've set the hash to L4 source and destination. So how do we know which port is forwarding that traffic? We issue the show forwarding info MAC ingress interface in this command because it's a it's a layer two, it's layer two MACs that we basically want to look at. And we specify, we see that the 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 ingress interface is 1148 and the egress interface is using lag one and one port one 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 to reach the destination. Okay, in this next next example, we have a, a VSX pair with two 8325s connecting via the inner switch link, the ISL over lag 256. And using VLAN 10, in this case, all of the all of the systems or the IP addresses you see there are on V are in VLAN 10. And again, as we've seen previously, there's two physical paths towards the destination. We have uh, lag 256 set to L4 source and destination hash, and we want to know which L2 ISL port is forwarding that traffic out. So just the same as the last case, the show forwarding info MAC ingress interface, we specify the incoming interface, the source and destination MAC addresses, VLAN 10. And then we come to find out that lag 256 is forwarding the traffic using port 111. Okay, in this example, we have a ECMP with route only ports. We have an 8325 connected at the bottom of the topology, and it has two next hops for uh, network 11110, where you see server destination up at the top of the diagram. And so uh, the two next hops are reached through 1010.1 through port 111 and through 112 using a next hop 1011.1. And we want to find out which which ECMP port is forwarding that traffic. We run the show forwarding info IP command again using the source IP 131110, the destination IP 11110. And we can see that the ECMP interface 111 is being used to forward that traffic out to the destination. And this uh, next example is just a repeat of the last configuration topology. In this case, we're just using IPv6 in the same fashion. You can see we've got two next hops for that destination that you see at the top, the 2001 DV8 12110 IPv6 address. And we have two physical paths, again, going through 111 and 112, and we want to see you know, which ECMP port is forwarding that packet. And we see that in this case, also egress interface CCMP 111 is forwarding that traffic out to that destination. Okay, so for details, these are just uh, feature solution details, uh, limitations, conflicts, or exclusions. As we mentioned, this feature is only available on the 8325 and 10,000 series switches. Sub interfaces are not supported. Only L3 and L4 lag hash modes are supported for forwarding info. The L2 source and destination hash is, is, is not supported um, for use with this feature. Keep in mind that the MAC and routing tables, they're constantly changing. So whenever you use the forwarding info feature command, it's representing a, a snapshot in time for how that packet is being forwarded. That could change at any time. The feature is not applicable for broadcast, multicast, and or unicast, unknown unicast packets. And tunnel interfaces are also not supported. Okay, just to show that we also can use the REST API for determining the same information. So for 10.11, you want to use the, the REST v1011 system forwarding infos URI, pay note of that specific URI. 
Uh, the request body includes all the kind of the same attributes we'd be using from the command line, uh, such as the ingress port, source and destination IP, VLAN, et cetera. And that the response body, again, same same information that we would be including through the CLI. And so uh, just taking an example from a, a prior slide, we're going to use the REST API to to basically find the same thing. We've, we've got 283.25s. We want to find the, the path to destination 192.168.1.4. And you'll see the CLI commands or the REST API commands that we use to do so in the next slide. So what do we do first with the REST API? You, you need to issue a call to the login API to, to basically get a cookie to be able to use for any of these transactions. And so you can see in this case, we're basically writing the cookie just out to the temp cookie file. And so step two, we're going to issue a post request with the source and destination MAC addresses and ingress port 1125, same as we would have through the CLI. And pay note to the, the identity field there. This is just used to uniquely identify the transaction or the request ID that you're going to use for this request, because there could be multiple REST queries outstanding. So you have to give it an ID um, for, for use within the, the feature. And then to see if the system actually has taken that, that post and, and whether or not the post is successful, you can just, you query the the forwarding infos API, and you can see that that the request ID that we submitted in step two it's, has been completed successfully. So now that, that that URI is there, we can actually query it. So in step four, we query that request ID using the forwarding infos, and then you can see at the end the slash one to identify the request ID. And you can see that we come back with the L2 port has destination as port 112, the same as what we would have seen through the CLI. And finally, we want to delete that request ID from the system because you, as, as I mentioned, you'd have, you could have multiple outstanding request IDs. So you want to make sure that, that you, you clear those when you're, when you're complete with your transaction. Okay, and that's just an example of how to use the REST API to, to use the forwarding feature. So best practices for configuring this feature, uh, if you're using VSX lags, you want to configure the L4 hash over the ISL to be able to determine the traffic flow because by default, it's going to be using the L3 source destination hash and you can't get L2 forwarding information using that hash. So you'd need to change that if you wanted to see forwarding decisions over the ISL for layer two traffic. And for, uh, for routed ports, for L3 lags and routed port connections, you want to leave the L3 hash as it is or configure it to L4 hash for the, for the best output. Thank you for your time and hope you enjoyed this session.